kind of scary, but it's fine. <laughs> and like Corey was saying, uh, we've all come to know and love this material, material so much. I'm very excited to see what the community, how the community responded to this. Because, I mean, we, I, we, we could recite this stuff in our sleep. We know all these characters back and forth, the ins and outs. We've heard the interviews so many times. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be great to see how it affects someone new, someone fresh, and how mm -hmm. they're going to react to the material, especially in the way that we've crafted it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully our message is conveyed to them in a way that will change or inspire, hopefully. It's, it's um, what I think the most interesting part about the script, about the text, is when you go see a show like this, um, meaning like when you go see a show that has just monologues or like, you know, interview text, you know, it, it can get really dull. You know, it can get really like, oh, this person just keeps on jabbering on and on and on and on and on. But with this, with this particular play, with this particular process, the whole point is to, is to make things as theatrical and as, and as beautiful and as, and as meaningful as possible. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and though someone may be monologuing for like five minutes, they, they, they kind of cut all the crap out, first of all. Second of all, they, you, have this, you have a beautiful picture of the entire cast and uh, dramaturgs and directors and, and designers have all put together to keep you interested and keep you engaged. And I think that's wonderful. That, that, like, there really isn't like a moment where you're like, this is, come on, wrap it up. We get it. You're know, so dying. Like, you know, we get it. And it's like, no, no. Because you're watching this beautiful, like, interpretive dance, or you're listening to this beautiful song over this person's monologue, you know? And I think we've all learned how to think more theatrically oh, yeah, through this definitely. process. Yeah. They always ask us the question, what can theater do best? What are the elements of the stage that speak better than television or movies can? So for me, and I'm sure for you guys, that's just been a huge mind-opening experience of how I even think yeah. about theater or the oh, possibilities yeah. of it. Oh, yeah. it, it it's, it's, a, it's an imagination roller coaster, basically. Yeah. You, know, you can take, like, for instance, you could take like a pen, and, it, and that pen can be a pen in this scene, and the next scene it's a microphone, and the next scene it's a key tape, it's a knife, it's a, you know, whatever. And the cool part is with our group is like, you totally buy it. You're like, oh, yeah, that's a knife. <laughs> you know, you're cutting a sandwich, you know, like, I, to to I believe you, you know, and it's, and it's, and we learned that, I think, uh, really well from, uh, Lee and, and Kelly. <laughs> How do you guys feel about writing this script? This whole story, this process, everything is yours. So how do you think that that has personally affected you guys, your style, that kind of thing? That's question. a good question. <laughs> yeah. like a show, I would say, like for example, you had such an emotional connection to the person you interviewed, and yeah. now Louis playing him. Yeah, I, I had uh, interviewed a man by the name of Derek Humphrey. He was the he was the founder of a society called the Hemlock Society. They were a group that was dedicated to uh, promoting legalized assisted suicide. And what they did, they uh, they actually got a law promoted in Oregon, which is called the Death with Dignity Act, that permits legal assisted suicide. Mm -hmm. And um, I talked with that gentleman, and uh, we just had I felt a real strong connection with him in the interview. I really, I felt for his, I, I, fought, I wanted to fight for his cause, you know, I wanted to get his voice out there, and I didn't want his voice to be tainted, and now Louis uh, is going to be playing him, and I'm very grateful for him doing it. I trust him with his text, and uh, I, I just want to make sure that his voice is, is not tainted in any way, because I, I think it's one thing we all worry about, is that we're going to uh, construe exploit. or, or exploit yeah. these these texts in some way, but that's not what we're trying to do at all. What, our mission is to keep the purity of these texts because because the text is the person. The text holds the essence of that person within it, and um, that's our mission. And as far as ownership goes, I think it's something that I haven't really understood yet. I think it'll probably hit me once once the show's over, and once we get the script in our hand, I'll say, you know, yeah. Western Michigan University, University property of these <laughs> students, and I'll be wow. We can do anything we want with this now. Totally. And and I, yeah, totally. I totally agree. I think that, like, for me, as far as ownership goes, I don't know if I feel like a genuine, like, I mean, I know that there's parts of me in this show, you know what I'm saying? But then again, there's parts of you in every show. I think for me, what I'm taking the most out of, out of this process is um, uh, the ability to recognize and write a, a good narrative. Um, we're, we're in a class, uh, one man, create your, your own one-man show class, and... This process has been, oh, incredibly really helpful. Like, like yeah. it's just, it's just been so like, oh, okay, like it's been like, okay, so that's, What's that's important? the actual, that's <laughs> yeah. important, blah blah blah. Like let, let, let's write about this. This this needs to be said. This this is how you would say it. This is how you would convey this. Uh, blah, blah like things like that. And um, well, and for me, it's become, 
I appreciate playwrights <laughs> much more, or not even appreciate, but like I think understand and respect more because when you have five pages of something that means so much to you and it gets taken down to three lines, yeah. you know, choosing those and choosing what is most important, what needs to be said, or or hearing someone else say something and going, no, 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 it should be like this, or you know, that feeling of it's it's a really fine line. And what's interesting is knowing that playwrights write a play and then put it out there for anyone to direct, anyone to act, and they don't know how their words are being said, you know. So it gives me a new respect for. Um, giving justice to future plays that I do and really um, learning and trying to understand what the playwright wants. Like doing it justice, like, right. like Joe was saying about the text and how we don't want to like uh, like uh, obstruct the view of these real people who we've interviewed and it's just, it's really, it's really, um, I guess, rewarding, you know, like, yeah. uh, you know, like. Rewarding to know that these people trust you so much with their words that you're going to do Justice. And it's also a big challenge to portray people who are living right now in this community. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Whereas usually with a play, it's it's a made up character. You know, it's fiction, and this is the opposite of that. I mean, these yeah. people live are down coming. the street. They're coming. You know, yeah, and they're coming to see it. So there's, <laughs> there's definitely an interesting challenge there because you really have to honor them yeah. and um, not take it, not take them for granted, and not do a caricature and really give them the thought and the, the grace that they need for that character to really be honestly who you saw in the interview. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a really big challenge, but it's, it's an exciting one. And I'm really excited to see you know, what our final roles look like. Yeah. You know, Because we've been working on this material so long, but not actually acting-wise. We haven't been working on the acting portion of it until <laughs> last night, actually. So that'll be interesting because I feel like with a character that I'm currently working on, Lynn Mills, I feel like I haven't had time to really get to know her because in this process it's just bam, 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 you know, do what you can right now, plug, plug. do it yeah. the best you yeah. can right now, and often that comes more across as a generalization of a character instead of a true-to-life, idiosyncratic human being, you know, and so there, that's going to be a big challenge, I think, in the next week and a half. There are moments, you said this the other day in rehearsal, there are moments where we're having this monologue, we're on, we're on stage, we're kind of saying these words, and you're right, at times you take it for granted, but then at other times you're like, oh my god, like it hits you in the middle of a sentence, you're like, someone said this, someone, has someone said this. actually did yeah. this, and we talked to them, you know, like, and he's feeling <laughs> that and, right and, now, yeah, and they <laughs> felt this right now, and it's like, and so there's always these like cathartic moments in rehearsal <laughs> where you're kind of like, like, oh, you know, and, and she said, uh, goodbye, my love, and you're like, Oh, keep going, keep going, you know, yeah. keep going, that, that, someone said that, but like, keep going, you know, like, don't, you know, but it's, it's a wonderful, it's, it's wonderfully emotional and wonderfully touching, you know. And, That's exactly what I'm looking yeah. forward to is, we've been working on this and researching this and becoming experts on these words for months now, but we've never really together taken the time to sit down and, I don't know, let them hit home really, yeah. I don't think. I think when we initially heard them, it was like, I cried so many times on the first day when we heard interviews or heard things. I was like, oh my God, I can't, you know, but now we've become so numb to it because it's like, oh yeah, great, let's hear that another, let's hear that death monologue or who will hold this baby, let's hear that moment again. And when we take the time to really invest in it and it's just you alone on stage and it's, you know, a dress rehearsal or a performance, I feel like it's going to be an entirely different energy and it's really, we're going to be so connected and it'll really be transcended, I hope. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys.